Yes. Now moving on to the compound microscope. In compound microscope, actually, uh, from simple microscope, you can see that uh, we have magnifying power, and uh, the magnifying power depends on the focal length inversely related to that. So, in order to increase the magnifying power, in in, in order to uh, see an image more and more enlarged, we need to reduce the focal length. But you know, reducing the focal length uh, below a given value is practically not that feasible. So, what we require is we need we are going to combine two lenses with the help of two lenses we can increase the magnifying power that's what we see in compound microscope so in the case of compound microscope therefore we can say there are two lenses uh, the first lenses so uh, when you draw the ray diagram for the compound microscope it is advised to draw it like this you know first you draw a line it is supposed to be the principal axis of both the lenses so by the way what what's the next title to write this compound microscope okay. compound microscope consists of two lenses two convex lenses so i advise you uh, not to draw both the lenses together okay so whatever sequence whatever step i am following the same step you if you've tried to follow you will not make much of mistakes Okay, because once if it is, uh, if you're going wrong, then to correct it again, you'll have to redraw, okay, it, it will consume time, okay. So, let us draw the diagram of a compound microscope. As I said, it consists of two lenses. Actually, what happens is, the basic idea is that one lens will form an image, that image will be the object for the next lens, so that you will get a final enlarged image. This is the basic idea. So, uh, you know, in the uh, compound microscope, you might have seen, when you, uh, you know, especially when you observe the, uh, the slides in biology lab and all, you keep the object close to the lens. But that, even if it is kept closed, close to it, um, it is between focus and uh, O, sorry, focus and 2F, F and 2F. Then only it will give you an enlarged image on the other side. When you get an enlarged image on the other side, that enlarged real image, because it is supposed to be a real image, then only it will be formed as the object for the next lens. So that image, the real image so formed, will act as the object for the next lens. You know, the two lenses I mentioned, first lens is called objective lens, second is called eyepiece. So we're keeping the object between F and 2F, be very clear, between F and 2F of the objective lens but be very clear that the focal length of the objective is very very short short focal length so in a compound microscope the lenses should be of short focal length of which the objective lens has to have a even shorter focal length than even the eyepiece so we just imagine a short focal length objective as i said before you draw it along with me Okay. O stands for objective. And you keep the object where between F and 2F. Between F and 2F. Now take that as the object and draw the image. Parallel to the principal axis, the light ray passes through the focus. Fine, yeah. The next ray you draw through the optic center. When it goes through the optic center, where it will meet? It will meet at a point after 2F. That is, this is the position of the image. You know, the light rays started from the uh, above the principal axis, but meeting below the principal axis, it shows that the final image is inverted. So you draw an inverted real image here see say real inverted image beyond 2f so what we have seen is you know if a b is the object a dash b dash is the image once again the object is kept between f and 2f of the objective lens so that a real enlarged inverted image is formed beyond 
2f of the object index. By the way, now only you're going to position the eyepiece. When you draw the eyepiece, you should be more careful. When you draw the second lens eyepiece, it should be drawn in such a way that that lens, okay, it should be positioned in such a way that that lens should be of a you know longer focal length than the IP uh, sorry, objective. So this eyepiece lens should have a longer focal length than the than that of the objective lens, and also the image you no know, a dash b dash form that should lie between focus and optic center of the eyepiece. You know this lens is the eyepiece. Okay, so this optic center. So I'm going to draw the focus of the eyepiece here. Write it as Fe. Is it clear? So nothing to do with uh, the F4 to F1 and all of the object lens. So we just consider what is the point to, to take into account that A dash B dash should be in between focus and optic center of the eyepiece. And also this focal length, you know, C2 Fe, that should be longer than that of object. Okay, and one more thing, this distance CF, you know, that focal length, the, you know, the same distance itself we should consider here also. FE. I hope it's the same. Okay. Now, you imagine which has the object, A dash, B dash as the object and draw the image diagram or ray diagram for the image formation by the, this lens. Okay, eyepiece. Okay. One light ray through the focus. Another light ray take through the optic center. You see, it's going straight. Okay. That is the two rays are going like this. You look from the side. You get virtual image. How do you get the position of the virtual image? You should extend this ray back. Straight, okay, and even this also you extend backwards. Okay, so sorry, I have uh, so I'm not getting it uh, straight, so I'll be replacing it with a straight line, okay. But you know, when you draw, use a scale and replace it with a Dotted line. It should be drawn with dotted lines over here. Why? Because it's forming virtual image. Okay, this is the straight line. Okay. Yeah. Clear? Yeah. So that means those two draw lines I drew now, you know, it should be straight, straight backwards. So it means this is the position where the image is formed. So we get an enlarged. There again, I'm drawing a, a using a straight line. Sorry, the other way. It is, it is supposed to be inverted. Okay. Mm, like this, it is supposed to be. That also has no role with respect to F4. Anywhere it can be. So this image form now, no? Virtual. All of you remember, whichever are the dotted lines, this should be with dotted lines. This is also dotted lines. Okay, fine. So we get A double dash. B double dash as the final virtual enlarged image. So all of you look at the diagram once again. The object AB is kept between F and 2F of the objective lens so that a real enlarged image A dash B dash is formed beyond 2F. This image acts as an object between focus and optic center of the what eyepiece so that a final virtual and enlarged image is formed on the same side. Okay, that's what you observe from the diagram. Now let me uh, write down the distances as well. This is the object distance. 
okay and this is the image distance vo of the which lens objective lens and for eyepiece lens i'll change the color this is the object distance for eyepiece what about the image distance v fine i hope it is clear now what else is subject distance and image distance we marked okay now we have to derive the expression for the magnifying power here also ah, by the way one more thing i said any optical instrument when you consider the two positions of uh, final image we should consider first case we consider the final image at the least distance for distinction that is at d okay so that means over here in this diagram we, get, we are going to take ve as d only let's come to that but before that let me say what's the definition of magnifying power in the same pattern as we've defined before the magnifying power is nothing but theta i by theta o that is angle subtended by the i sorry angle subtended by the image with the with our i to the angle subtended by the object with the i where the object is supposed to be at the least distance for distinct division that is the object thing theta o we have to define separately okay this is the way we look at and this is theta o if this distance is d that is drawn uh, to be defined separately from microscope so m is equal to like we said in the previous case we can rewrite this equation as tan theta i by tan theta o okay now look at the diagram and say what is tan theta i and tan theta o you can uh, by, by the way to mark theta i and theta o look a double dash b double dash okay this is the final image that makes an angle theta i with the with our eye or with the lens so this is theta i now to define theta o we need it separately but look on the same diagram if you want to draw on the same position where the final image is formed we draw it that is a double dash let me take this as e so what is this a double dash e a double dash e is nothing but the object ab ab is the actual object no so imagine that lens is kept at the position where the final image is formed why that's because here we have assumed that the final image is formed at the least distance for distribution so in that case if you extend it to this this angle is nothing but theta o okay as i said uh, as i said at the beginning i'm going to incorporate this diagram into the main ray diagram that's it is it clear so theta o you can mark like that okay let me carefully draw it next is i'm going to continue with the derivation tan theta i you can create in this case you should take the big triangle okay that is a double dash b double dash divided by the distance is ve in general the image distance divided by the object distance is a double dash e divided by ve itself okay so but you know the two quantities a double dash b double dash and a double dash e both the distances v v you know so they can be cancelled so what we can write is so we get m is equal to a double dash e double dash divided by a double dash e but a double dash e can replace with a b also okay i just replace a double dash e with a b okay so the next step we should look at is just multiply both numerator and denominator with a dash b dash we'll tell you why it should be done look can you say what will this a dash b dash by a b give look at the red diagram. a dash b dash is nothing but the image by the which lens objective lens a b is the object so this you can replace with what a dash b dash by a b you can replace with height of image by height of object what is height of image by height of object nothing but magnification produced by the first lens mo 
So MO okay, is the magnification by the first lens multiplied by. Similarly, look at the next one. A double dash, B double dash divided by A dash, B dash. That means the height of the image by height of object for the eyepiece. For eyepiece, A dash, B dash is the object. A dash, A double dash, B double dash is the image. So this is nothing but ME. So magnifying power can be considered as the product of the magnifications produced by the two lenses. So this can also be asked separately, but to show that the product of the magnification of the two lenses will give the magnifying power of the compound microscope. However, this is not the final equation. We have to we have to uh, express it in terms of focal length. So let us follow this way. M O we can write M O as what V by U. Oh, sorry, V O by U O. Correct. All right, when you uh, look at the magnifications, we can say MO is VO by UO. UO is negative. VO is positive because with respect to incident light. About ME, ME is VE by UE. Okay, but you can write VE by UE if you refer the previous derivation. So you're able to get it. You can write it as hmm, previous derivation when you look at V E by U V. What do you prove it as? I request all of you to refer that. You will get it as one plus D by F E. Remember what what we did is we we are multiplying. We are using the equation one by F is equal to. See this equation should use one by F E is equal to one by V E minus one by U E. Then multiply throughout by uh, V E because it's for I P S. Okay, then rearranging will get an expression for V by U A U E. But in the place of V E, what do you substitute? What is V here? V is nothing but minus D. Okay, I'm not elaborating it because we just discussed that in the simple microscope case. So I'm going to replace M O and U uh, M E in the first equation. So equation number one becomes magnifying power is equal to minus v o by u o multiplied by one plus d by f e okay one more approximation we can write with this actually the negative sign is showing that the final image will be inverted only with respect to the c actually a b this is the initial object and this is the final image so final image is inverted with respect to the initial object okay that's what is shown by the negative sign by the way uh, one more approximation we can write is we just said uh, the object is between focus and 2f of the objective lens. And what do you prefer actually? We prefer the object close to focus or close to 2f. You know, the closer the object is, the bigger would be the magnification. So we are using microscope to see an enlarged image. What does it mean? It means as close as possible, you have to keep the object to the lens. So the, the UO here can be approximated as equal to the focal length itself of the object. Similarly, if we consider L as the length of the microscope, you see, if you look at the two distances, VO and UE, the UE is very negligible compared to VO. So we can replace this VO as nearly equal to the length of the microscope length of the microscope so we get m is equal to minus so we what we will write l by f o into one plus d by f -E. look this is the final expression for the magnifying power of a compound microscope magnifying power of a compound microscope when uh, the final image is where is the final image? Final image is at the least distance for distinction. It's clear. And the final image is at the least distance for distinction. This is the case. I hope it is clear. Okay, so practice this well. The next case is for compound microscope itself when the final image is at the at infinity. Okay. 
that diagram we will draw next okay all of you can take it down Next, we'll follow the red diagram for compound microscope where the final image is at.